So I've been working with Kubernetes for the last few weeks um, and working with the Open Contrail team to uh, have Contrail integrated uh, to provide the SDN networking layer uh, for inter-container, inter-pod connectivity uh, with Kubernetes. So I have a really exciting demo, a few demos actually that I'd like to show you today. Um, I'm just going to run through them fairly quickly. The basic setup that I have here is I have uh, a Kubernetes master running in a VM um, on OpenStack. I have two Kubernetes nodes um, and I have a Contrail controller. I actually will link in the video uh, access to the repo uh, that will give you the details on how I've actually got Kubernetes configured with to use Contrail. So here's an example. They're actually well-known examples. They're published in the Kubernetes repo under the examples. Um, so I've just modified them to, to pull IP addresses out of our load balancer pool that I've set up in my environment. So here I go. So I, here I have a, a session on the Kubernetes master. And I have two. I have the, the Cat's Pet Store and the Guestbook Go example. So I'm just going to go into Cat's Pet Store. And here all I'm going to do is actually just run this shell script, which is going to go and create all the um, controllers and the, the services and the pods. So I'm just going to run that. So namespace is default, which is something that um, I will go over. So this is executed, and now some polls are happening. So I'm just going to cancel the script, um, do a kubectl get pods, um, and in the default namespace, you can actually see that I have all the pods there to run the pet store application so they're all up and running if i go over to another window so i've got one of the nodes here if i run a docker ts on this guy i can see that um none of the the, the containers are actually running on that node they must be all running over here which is fine um the schedule will take care of where to put them so all the containers are there. We just trust that they're there. I actually am presenting this on a load balanced IP on my network that I should be able to reach. Um, so I can ping that. And now I should be able to actually hit this application and see that the load generator is pumping in data into that application. Um, so I'll leave that running. That's, that's my first demo. The second demo I actually have is pop back to the uh, Kubernetes master over here and I'll go over to the guestbook go and I'll, I'll do the same thing just written a quick shell script that actually is just going to go through and create all the services and the controllers um, the interesting thing about this if we actually look at it I'm just demoing here uh, the use of a different namespace so you can see I'm actually creating a namespace called namespace uh, Guestbook, I'm referencing that namespace. I've already recreated it. So kubectl get namespaces. You can actually see that I have default guestbook and cube system. And cube system is actually where I'm running the uh, UI at the moment. So um, that's basically showing multi uh, tenancy there because the Contrail system is uh, creating different network namespaces based on the the namespaces in Kubernetes, so they map one to one. So let me just run uh, the guestbook go script. So again, that's going to do something very similar. And if I do kubectl get pods, uh, and let me just do namespace equals guestbook. So I can I can see that all those are running right now. Um, so if I go over here and actually just hit guestbook, guestbook is up and running. And go and take a look at the the nodes. Docker, Docker PS. So I'm running some of the guestbook containers here. I see that I'm running um, the Redis slave and the guestbook uh, web app front end. Docker PS Redis. Let's see. If the Redis master for guestbook is actually running on the other nodes. So um, network namespaces are working between the nodes and the front end web app is actually talking to the Redis master, obviously. 
So that's great. If I actually just do a, um, I'll jump back to the master here. If I actually do all namespaces. Namespaces. I think that's it. So you can actually see that I've run up um, the Cat's Pet store in the default namespace. I've run up the Guestbook Go application inside the Guestbook namespace. Now the interesting thing is these both have Redis servers, so they're actually on different network namespaces. They won't interfere with one another. And the Cube system is actually running um, DNS. Uh, so I'm also demo demoing with the Guestbook Go. It relies on DNS to talk to the Redis. Um, servers uh, and finally the UI there which is running inside the cube system namespace as well. Uh, I think I may be able to actually pop over here and do a, a dig. So if I dig against the endpoint that I've actually created um, to serve uh, DNS I should be able to actually see the cube UI um, service IP. Let's see if this hands me back an A record. Yeah, so I do actually get an A record there. So if I query any of those service names, I can actually pull the A record out um, for the services. So that's indicating that the open control with integration, DNS integration is actually working as well. So fantastic. Thanks for, uh, for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.